Every day, I wear a t-shirt to work that reads CNC Machining Experts on the back of it. And though that may be true, I can tell you with 100% certainty that every single program I have ever written could have been improved in some way by someone else. No process or program is perfect, but in production, the goal should be to get as close to perfect as possible and constantly look for ways to improve as time goes on. Working for Titans of CNC, we have the privilege of touring shops of all sizes all over the world. And something that we see over and over again is that many machine shops are just plain terrible when it comes to efficiency. Now there can be many reasons for this, but one thing that we see far too often are machinists and programmers that don't want to change or improve their processes or cycle times on existing programs. I can't even count the number of times I've heard people say, this program has been running for years just fine, we aren't changing it now, it's perfect as is. Or, why should I try to improve anything? It's not like the company's going to pay me extra to make anything better. These responses are among the dumbest things I've ever heard, and a lot of the time it's in big shops doing aerospace or defense work. When I walk into 90% of the shops out there, I can look at pretty much any job running and see that 20 to 50% of the cycle time could be eliminated using newer technology, better tools, cleaner tool paths, or better fixturing. If that cycle time dropped by 20 to 50%, several things would happen. One, you get more job security. Eliminating the extra cycle time means your shop can take on more work. Two, you make more profit and you make your customer happy. If you eliminate some of the grossly inflated costs to produce a part, you can absorb some of that to make the job more profitable and at the same time pass on some of the cost savings to your customer. That means your customer will be happy to send more work your way. Three, you get paid more. When the owner of a company is suddenly making hand over fist and he knows that it was you that made the improvements to the bottom line, they will usually share some of that profit with you. Four, you make on-time delivery easier. Once again, making your customers happy and giving you job security. Here's a good example. An aerospace company I know is worth $110 billion. For the sake of this discussion, let's say that 10% or $11 billion of that comes from manufacturing. If they were to cut 20% of their cycle times, that would lead to an additional profits of $2.2 billion. With 115,000 employees, that could equate to every single employee at that company getting a $20,000 raise. So, why doesn't this happen? The most innocent culprit is ignorance. Maybe the programmer just doesn't know any better, and it's extremely rare for the programmer's boss to know machining better than the programmer does. No programmer knows the best way to do everything. The next culprit is laziness. There are a lot of machinists out there that love long cycle time so that they get more time sitting on their workbench watching Netflix. Then there's fear of failure. Going from 10 inches per minute in stainless to 500 inches per minute can be scary at first. And nobody wants to be the guy that scraps apart because he was trying something that his boss deems stupid or risky. Next up, and maybe worst of all, is the programmer machinist that's just plain incompetent, but pretends to know it all, and has the bosses fooled into believing it. The boss might see a video online of some crazy machining and ask, hey, why can't we do that here? And the answer is usually a laugh followed by a stream of excuses for why it's impossible. And I have met that guy repeatedly over the years. I had a 40-year manual machinist tell me that you have to use five different reamers to get one hole to size properly. I had a 30-year CNC machinist refuse to run my program because you can't use a five-flute end mill in aluminum. It has to be a two or three flute. These guys are pure cancer to a shop. And even if you show them what's possible, they'll fight you tooth and nail because you just made them look stupid. I've had machinists complain to my boss that I was going to destroy the machines and fixtures because I didn't know what I was doing and I was running way too fast. One aerospace shop I started working at had never run a single mill over 20 inches per minute. When the shop supervisor saw one of my programs running at 700 inches per minute, he came to my desk bewildered and told me that he didn't even know that the machines could move that fast. Now, some shops make most of their money doing one-off parts and a production job might only be a five-piece order. At times, it may make sense to take things a little slower, but that doesn't mean it's okay to be grossly inefficient. But for a true production shop, programs that have been running for a year or two should always be looked at again, preferably by a different person than the guy who originally programmed the part. 
Sometimes a new set of eyes can work wonders. Tooling technology is always advancing. See what's new out there, ask a salesman for a demo tool, and find out what's possible today that wasn't possible six months ago. If you're a manager or a shop supervisor that thinks you might have someone setting the pace in your shop that isn't as great as they say they are, bring in a contractor and pay them a commission based on the cycle time saved. I used to do this myself as a side hustle. If a friend told me that the shop they worked at was terrible, I would ask for their boss's phone number and offer to reprogram the part with their longest cycle time or highest volume for free with the understanding that anything else they wanted me to look at afterward would cost them 5% of the time saved over the course of one year on that job. A lot of programmers out there love improving cycle times, so you can also post a part in our Facebook group or on the feed on CNC Expert and see what our community thinks the cycle time should be. The point is, if we just let things stay inefficient, the only logical outcome is unemployment and more work being offshored because there are other shops out there that will take your work away and your shop will eventually close its doors. And you might have no one to blame but yourself. Thanks for listening. See you guys next time.